Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to work through the example where we are going to start with two seemingly straightforward and simple molecules. We have ethylene and we have acetic acid, and we are going to form quite a monstrosity on the right, and we are going to use our two molecules as the only sources of carbon in our final products. Well, this synthesis looks quite handful, so let's try to break down our target molecule into the building blocks and see how we can stitch it together from different bits and pieces. The first thing that kind of jumps at me right away is this part of the molecule, which is quite obviously going to be coming from our acidic acid. Which means that during this synthesis I'm going to be looking at making this bond over here through either side of the oxygen, so I'm going to be making my ester. Another thing that jumps at me right away is our double bond. It's not just an irregular double bond, it is a specifically cis or Z double bond, which means that this guy got to be coming from the alkyne. And then I also have two alkyl pieces, here and here, which I will have to add to my molecule as well, and since I'm most likely going to be working with the alkyne, because my Z double bond has to come from the alkyne, I'm going to be stitching those two pieces onto my alkyne in the middle of my synthesis somehow. So at this point I kind of get a little bit of an idea of how my synthesis is going to look like, so let's go through the retrosynthetic analysis and see how we are going to be able to do it step by step. So the first thing that I want to take out of the way is the ester. There are two different ways how I can make this ester. One, I can do it via the SN2 reaction, where my carboxylic acid, or rather I should say my acetate anion, going to attack the primary alkyl halide like so, displacing the halogen and forming the corresponding ester via the SN2 reaction, or I can perform an acyl substitution, if we are already familiar with the carboxylic acid derivatives and their chemistry, of course, in the presence of pyridine, my alcohol can react with my acid chloride and essentially end up replacing that chlorine, giving me my ester as well. Assuming that we are sticking to the first semester organic chemistry here, we are going to keep with the first method and we are going to keep the second one for later. So how do I make my acetate? anion. Well, that part is quite trivial. We're just going to take the acidic acid and we are going to perform a simple acid-base chemistry by deprotonating it with some sort of a base with, let's say, something like sodium or potassium hydroxide and we'll get our anion. So that part is easy. What is more challenging is how we are going to make our alkyl halide. Making a primary alkyl halide like that can be a little bit of a challenge because there are not that many methods that we know know that we'll be able to accomplish that. We can do it via the radical hydrohalogenation, and in that case we would have to start with the corresponding alkene, or we can do it by replacing the OH with BR uh, using different uh, substitution reactions, probably something like with uh, PBR3 would accomplish that goal. But we have a problem here. My predecessor on the right side, this guy, has two double bonds. So if I try to do the radical hydrohalogenation here, I will have a problem of the selectivity. There is no way I can guarantee that my hydrohalogenation is going to happen with one double bond and ignore the second double bond, which means that that is not a viable option for us. So I'm going to cross that option out. So the next challenge that I have here is how to put the OH group onto the least substituted atom of my molecule. And here I have a few options as well. Maybe I'm going to think about something like hydroboration oxidation, but then I'm going to run into the same problem as before. I would have to have two double bonds and there is no way to guarantee that I'm going to react with one double bond and ignore the other double bond. So hydroboration oxidation here is not an option at all. Another option that we have here is that if we create this double bond at the same time when we are placing OH on the second carbon from the place where our uh, new carbon-carbon bond is, that is a hallmark of an epoxide reaction. So that is how the epoxide is going to open with good nucleophiles. So that means that my 
predecessor to this alcohol should be coming from a reaction where I react a nucleophile with an epoxide. And probably the easiest pairing here is going to be our alkynide anion and the corresponding epoxide. We can easily make the epoxide from our starting material by doing the epoxidation with something like MCPBA or any other epoxidizing agents, and the alkynide ion is going to be coming from the corresponding alkyne, which we can make from acetylene and ethyl bromide, both of which can be easily synthesized from our starting material. So now, when we have a general outline for our synthesis, let's fill in the gaps and do our reactions. So, starting with my ethylene, I'm going to do a few different reactions to make my starting materials that I will have to put together later in the synthesis. First, I'm going to react it with HBr, making ethyl bromide, so I have this molecule that I'm going to use later on. Next, I'm going to do the epoxidation with MCPBA, that's going to give me my epoxide. We'll save that for the future use as well. And finally, we are going to take our ethylene, react it with Br2, followed by the three equivalents of sodium amide to give me the corresponding acetylenide anion. I need three equivalents of sodium amide here because the first equivalent is going to give me alkene, second equivalent is going to give me the alkyne after the second HBr elimination, and the third equivalent will deprotonate my alkyne, giving me my nucleophile. Next, I'm going to react my newly obtained nucleophile with the ethyl bromide, which I saved from one of my previous steps, to give me the following molecule which I'm going to promptly deprotonate again, making a nucleophile that will react with an epoxide from the previous step as well, giving me this molecule after the acidic workup. Next, I'm going to replace my OH with bromine using PBr3 and pyridine, convert my triple bond into the Z double bond using the hydrogen on the Lindlar's palladium, and finally perform the SN2 reaction to convert my bromide into the ester by taking the bromide reacting it with the acetate anion, which I make by deprotonating my carboxylic acid with sodium hydroxide, which gives us our target molecule. Oof, this synthesis was quite handful. This is also a very good example of what we call a convergent synthesis, where we start with multiple different branches that eventually start collapsing one into the other one. So in many cases in your course, you are not going to be performing synthesis linearly, but rather we are going to make one part of the molecule molecule separately from the other part of the molecule, and then at the end, or somewhere in the middle, we are going to combine them together. Generally speaking, convergent synthesis they are preferred over linear ones, because this way you can minimize any problems that you can have on each step, because if, let's say, one of your steps fails, then the rest of the molecule is not going to be affected. So overall, you can expect a convergent synthesis like that on the exam and in the homework, although in the first semester specifically, we still typically give a lot of linear synthesis to our students. But as I said, something like that is definitely a fair game for the exam, so keep an eye for convergent synthesis like that. Have you ever had to come up with a convergent synthesis like that? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching till the very end. If you learned something new today, hit that like button to help promote this video so more students can see it, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, Watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow!